Well, hello there. Um, so today we have a little uh, new arrangement. I have a task to make a fully functional 2D game, or well, at least uh, maybe just a basic game, in under 10 minutes. Well, for this we are going to use the Quicktime Fusion. 2.5 and don't worry there is no point of getting a developer unless you really have to include the logos of your own and not include the clicked infusion logos yeah something like that and in case you need some extras like monetizing for mobile devices etc 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 but for now in the video description it's somewhere there below you can see the link for the free version, which should be pretty much the same that I'm going to show you today. And yes, at the end of the video there will be something you've actually come here for, which is a giveaway. Well, yeah, let's not jump above ourselves. I mean, ahead of ourselves and actually start making the damn game. So we'll click new application. First of all, we need to decide what kind of game we're going to make. What the hell are we after? Well, I'm gonna say <coughs> what I did was double clicking on the frame. <coughs> so, as soon as you click the new application, you get the new frame, and I just clicked on it. Yeah, yeah, clear? Okay, all good. Then we double click on empty space. How easy is that? Well, a hell of a lot of objects to choose from. I don't know half of them. <coughs> I mean, I do know half of them. Uh, yeah, let's be optimistic. But we are going to click on the active. And then we are going to click OK. Now we have a cursor that basically is able to place an active on the frame. Let's place it somewhere near the center. Easy, isn't it? Yeah. OK. Now automatically it selects the active that you just created. Let's double click it. Now we went to the editor of active objects which is basically the paint to <coughs> I mean Photoshop <coughs> I mean the drawing tool yeah so all we got to do from now on is select the uh, rectangle tool choose the color on the right I don't know why it's red I didn't turn the blood or anything but fair enough let's choose black and draw a little rectangle. Oh, my bad. It doesn't draw it fully because it didn't select the filled version. Okay, now I've selected it. So we select filled version. We select the black color, and we draw a square like that. You see, everything's black. Good. Now what we have to do is we have to stretch it a little bit like that and make it a bit smaller afterwards, just in case. This is going to be the body for our stickman. As you might have guessed from the description or name of the video or whatever, I'm creating the physics game. So, yeah. First we need to rename this object to a body of a person. So we go to rename and call it body. Okay, how exciting is that? Now we have a body of a character. Now we double click again, active create an active somewhere above, double click that and we click on the little clear sign guess what it does? that's right, it clears it and now we have an empty space we zoom in a bit with the mouse, we'll scroll it up and we select a circle or ellipse tool choose the filled version, now now we have a black color selected so that's the one we're looking for and we create a simple circle don't worry if it's not perfect, the crop tool will do the trick and make it more cut around the edges. Then click OK. So now we have a head for our person. So how about we go right click, <laughs> excuse me, we right click the object and then click rename and type in head. How easy is that, eh? Fair enough. <coughs> So now what we have to do is create some arms and legs for the person. Well, I say I'm too lazy, um, I'm too efficient to repeat the process all 
the way so I'm just going to click on the body and I'm going to clone the object or in fact even better duplicate it so that it behaves differently how many rows do I need? Uh, it's, uh, I need about four rows of these or actually we have two arms and two legs so in total there should be five body, two arms and two legs let's make it five nope didn't do the trick oh hold on I should have chosen the clone object let's undo that right click let's move it a bit right click and clone object now we select five rows and there we have it body 2, body 3, body 5, oh, body 5 obviously we're not going to have them named like that we're going to have them named as and 1 or arm 1, whatever you want to call it and 2 leg 1 and left two. Now guess what? We click on hand one. We move it all the way up here. We click on hand two and move it all the way up here. Now they're not exactly put in the right way and they're not the right size. So what we're going to do is rotate them and rescale them. Well, actually, let's rescale them first and then rotate them. So let's do this and let's do that. Now if we click once it gets selected. If we click twice it goes to scaling tool. If we click three times it goes to rotation tool. How cool is that? So I'm gonna rotate it and put it somewhere here. Now I'll click several times on this. I rotate it this way and then move it here that's right let's make it a bit more symmetrical let's rescale this put this here rescale that Put that there. Don't worry if they are not exact size. You can actually use the options or, as they say, properties on the left to see how big they are. So, if we go to the tab of size position, we can actually see the width and height. So, if you want the other one to be exactly the same, just remember the width and height here, 934, and put the same here, 9. 34. There we go. So now we have to try and see what it does. And guess what? It does nothing when we run the game. Hooray! Oh, I mean, no, that is not good. So we click on the body, we click on the movement tab, and we change it to physics static move. Guess what it's going to give us? It's going to give us a little warning that it needs a physics engine. Of course, we can't have the actual physics object without a physics engine in the game. So we double click, we scroll down, and we put in physics engine. Double click it and put it somewhere behind the frame. Don't worry, it won't get lost. So now we have the body, we have the head. And what we're going to do is make the head physical as well. So we go to movement tab after selecting the head. Then we go to type of movement and we select physics static movement. Guess what's going to happen when we run it? That's right, physics implies gravity. So all the objects that are physical are going to fall to the ground. We don't want that. What do we do? What do we do? Of course, we go to the logics of the game. We we'll go to event editor, then we we'll click on new condition and we we'll click if the head is positioned 
anywhere near the edge of the screen and click OK. So we select all the arrows. Then we right click on the head column, which means we have to make some uh, action with that object. We go to movement and we make it stop. So whenever the head is attempting to leave the area, to leave the play area out of the edge of the screen, is going to stop, unlike the body, because we didn't do it for the body. So, what are we going to do now? Let's have a look. The body is a physical object. So, how about we go to the events tab, and there is a qualifier uh, row here. So, we click on qualifiers and edit. We need to add a qualifier of physical or something like that. In fact, we can choose any group we want because they don't actually mean it. Uh, I mean, of course, they mean something to you, but they don't actually mean anything unless you program them to mean something. I hope that makes sense. So, we're just going to put physical objects and then click OK. I think that's a reasonable name. Qualifier. It, do the same with the head. And now. We we'll choose a physical object for that as well. Now, how about we choose it for all the objects by selecting all of the objects that are not yet with that qualifier? Click Add and add the actual damn qualifier physical object. Okay, thank you. So now we can select different parts. We can check that they're all with the same qualifier. Good. <laughs> so now, what we have to do is change the head to all physical objects. So when they leave, try to leave the area, they're all gonna get knocked out and stuff. Well, I mean, they're all gonna stop. My bad. So what we do is we double click on the head object. And now we have to choose group physical object to change it. So whenever physical object leaves the area, the head stops. Wait, that's not right. Whenever the physical object tries to leave the, area, the play area, the physical object should stop. So, we go to the physical object column, right click it, go to movement, and go stop. And remove this here, because every time the physical object tries to leave the area, the head will stop, and we don't want that. So, let's try that again. We go to Frame Editor, we'll launch the application. So now both head and body don't leave the area. Good! And by the way, we should add the same movement type to all the body parts. So we go to the movement tab while having all the parts selected, and we give it the static movement. Ok, 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 just click through it. So now what we have to do is attach all the body parts to the body. We click on the head, then we go to the movement tab if you haven't already, then we go to the joint type and click on it and select regular joint. How lovely is that? Now joint name is going to be the head. Joint width probably with body. Now be careful. If it says anchor from the hotspot, then you want, might want to change it to the action point. And now what we have to do is choose where it's going to hook up with the body. Uh, that didn't sound right. I mean where it's going to connect with the body. Well that didn't sound. In other words, just where it's going to be attached to the actual body object. So yeah, I chose the bottom of it. Now let's try and see how it works. Run application. They are all obviously falling. And now the head is just swimming around and it's attached to the body. Good work. So now we are going to choose head again and restrict it from moving all the way 360 degrees around the damn anchor point. So in order to do that, we need to choose the lower angle and give it a negative value of minus, say, 45 degrees. 
So it's going to swing one way in 45 degrees and the other way is going to swing 45 degrees. So we're going to go give the upper angle the same value as the lower one, but uh, it's going to be with the opposite sign. I didn't mean to restore that, I don't know why that happened. Anyway, run the application and check how this works. Now it's only going 45 degrees and doesn't swing all the way like a drunk idiot. I mean, uh, like a drunk head. Well, fair enough. So now we click the hand 2 and holding shift we click the hand 1, which means we select both of them. Now we go to joint, type, and select a value joint. Now, is going to be joined with the body object as well and it's going to be joined from action point so now what we have is hand 1 hand 2 but we should probably change the way they are actually being linked because once the actual angle is a bit weird so this is 51 degrees, this is going to be 100 degrees. I think our actual hand is supposed to be with a different action point right at the edge here. So do the same for that appropriately for this hand. And there we have it. Now we'll just do the same thing for the legs. So go to movement tab choose the joint type revolute joint and make it joint with the body <laughs> choose the action point as the anchor deselect everything by clicking on blank space and choose the anchor point at the top approximately there. There we go. Now remember, we didn't set the lower and upper angles for the points uh, of connection with legs and hands, so what it's going to do, it's just going to swing around as if it's happy to see us or as if it wants to punch us, never mind. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go through each one of these and give the low angle of minus 45 give the upper angle of 45 same here minus 45 45 also we can do it by selecting several objects at the same time and it will also be minus 45 45 as you can see you can do a separate object or several objects in a group and they will all change values depending on how you set values to the group so by what I mean by the group is you select several objects so now let's test it and they actually should swing within restrictions of 45 angles thank you we look a bit sad there, but that's going to be changing a bit. Now, we obviously have the physics, but we don't actually have much game going on, because game is supposed to be an interactive freaking experience. Let's try and go to the events tab. Uh, I mean events editor tab. Choose new condition. And actually add some interactivity into our so-called game. We click on the keyboard and mouse icon. Go to the keyboard and repeat while the key is pressed. For this one I'm going to use WSD controls which means I am a fan of a shooter. No, not really. So while we press the W key repeat while the key is pressed and we choose W so I clicked I mean, uh, pressed W on the keyboard the body object is going to receive an impulse. So we go to movement, physics, and apply impulse. 
by the way I right clicked on the body column in order to do that so make sure that you click on the object that you actually want to move and we apply impulse the strength of the impulse I'd say let's just use one or two let's not make it strong now the interesting thing is the angle the angle starts in the collective infusion 2.5 how can I put it This way it's zero degrees. That way it's ninety degrees. That way it's hundred and eighty degrees. And obviously downwards is twenty, I mean two hundred and seventy degrees. I'm an artist or oh, with the word being added with F at the beginning but no man. <clears throat> so we're gonna obviously need it to go up when we press W with the shooter controls so we put 90 degrees let's test it out I'm pressing W and it swings upwards there we go a simple interaction now if we don't want to change all that goes on in the certain event, we just need to drag the event and drop it down to the next one. Well, to the bottom one, preferably. So now we have two events. I clicked here to deselect them all. Now I need another event that makes it go another way. So I'm gonna drag the last event and deselect again. Drag the last event deselect again and now we're going to change all the keys that have been pressed to A, S and D so I'm going to double click this event and press A double click this event press S double click this event press D obviously we need to change the angles leave the impulse the same so we go to right click of the next tick box and we go to edit we leave the impulse the same so it's going to be 2 anyway we click OK but the angle is going to be 180 which means it's going to be go to the left so <coughs> we choose 1, 8, 0 and click OK <coughs> am I drunk or something? I can't even get the keys correctly then we right click the next stick edit leave 2 the same and give it 270 implying the force is going to go downwards and when D is pressed right click the event edit the tick box leave 2 as the strength of the impulse the same and just give it 0 meaning it's going to go to the right or 360 it's the same in click infusion 2.5 <laughs> apparently so now let's run the event. Let's see how well we control the character. Whee! He's dancing! Okay. While we have a, a simple ragdoll character going on around, we want to add some sort of game challenge to it. So what we're going to do is go to frame editor, double click, double click active object, and create another active object. Guess what this is going to be? The ball. <laughs> so now we click clear. Then we draw ellipse with the ellipse tool. But let's make it some other color like red, for example. Then we crop it. We click OK. Now we have the ball. Let's actually call it the ball. As you probably would have guessed, the bolt needs to be made physical as well. So we go to movement tab, click on the static, where, it's, where it says static, and give it a physics static movement. It's always the static movement. Now, we need to give it a qualifier, so that it behaves the same as other physical objects. We go to 
events tab, go to qualifiers, then edit, click add, and choose physical objects. Okay. Again, if you choose any other group, it would matter as long as it's all the same group used everywhere in events and frame editor. So, we go to event editor now. <laughs> and add a new condition. Because we want the movement of the ball to stop when it collides with other physical objects. So, let's go and click on the ball after add a new condition, so collisions with another object and physical object what happens then is that the ball stops let's try and run it okay so we can see that the ball is obviously getting stopped and moved around by the person but the person itself actually doesn't stop on hitting the ball so let's close the program down <coughs> and now we have to add root physical objects that obviously hits the ball that's the one it counts in the event this is going to stop as well. So we we'll go to right click on the column with physical objects group, movement, and stop. Let's run it again and test how it works. Now it's actually bouncing around on the ball, which is what we wanted. Let's give it a little bit of a challenge. So we are now going to have another active object that we're gonna call uh, let's not call it anything, just leave it as active so the next thing we're gonna do is double click it clear it up and draw another object that is gonna be black color and all it's gonna be is the simple black rectangle crop it click ok basically we are gonna make a hitbox that if the ball manages to hit it player gets points now here's the interesting bit we double click it again and this time we are not gonna create an active object we are gonna create the score object where is it? the score object Score object, score object, there it is. Obviously, it goes in the alphabetical order. Yeah. Anyway, we're gonna put the score object right here, drag it a little bit to the side so that it can actually fit properly. Here we have the built in score system of Click Team Fusion 2.5. So, what's gonna happen is that once the ball hits the active object actually let's rename it right click on it rename and call it target so now when now the ball hits the target is gonna bounce off and the score for the player is going to be added to this so, if we quickly have a look at the options, let's select the score and go to the first tab called Settings. It displays the score for player 1. It supports up to 4 players at the moment, click Team Fusion. And in events, we can make a simple event that basically does uh, the score adding up when the ball hits the target. So, let's do that. New condition click on the ball, collides with another object target, double click <laughs> now what we have to do is make the ball bounce off so we right click the ball column, click on movement 
and kind of let the physics do the bouncing by applying impulse angular impulse actually you know what let's just make it stop and that way it will actually try and bounce off from the object it hits because it will bounce off anyway that's the easiest way to do it if you don't believe me let's check it run it now we have the counter here as you can see but obviously it's not going to do anything so let's try and make the ball hit the uh, come on see it's already challenging <laughs> well that's another thing when uh, the ball is gonna hit something, it's gonna be bouncing off, but at the same time, it's always following the gravity because of our physics engine. So it's all built in here. So if you want it to be defining gravity at some point, you might need to add some special powers, which we are gonna talk about in a bit. In fact, let's talk about it right now. The new condition is gonna be while the keyboard button is being pressed while the key is pressed you know how to do that by now and we choose the button say F so while button F is being pressed we are gonna apply a slight impulse to the ball so we go to the ball core, movement, physics apply impulse give it a weak impulse of 1 click OK and it's going to be uh, attracted to the leg of the player, which is going to be the leg 2. So we kind of give like, some general powers of force levitation or whatever, and he's going to do it with his leg because he's a footballer Jedi. There we go. I figured it out. Yes. So <laughs> basically, we are supposed to give the ball uh, an impulse towards the leg of a player. How are we going to do that? Well, simple enough. We use the built-in uh, formula of counting the angles between two points. So we we'll go to the uh, first object, click it, as you can see the menu appears and go to distance and angles and then we go to angle over vector and just select that what appears here is x over vector and y over vector it says syntax error don't worry about it for now because we didn't complete our equation yet so what we're going to do is select the distance between the points of exposition of the first leg and the ball and the y positions of the first leg and the ball. How does this work? Vectors work really simple in click infusion. There is a starting point at the top of the screen, top left of the screen. There is a line, a straight line, supposedly, and there is the end. That is called a vector, basically a piece of line with a direction. So each point on the graph, if you know maths, has x and y coordinates. So the end of the vector also has x and y coordinate. So we're going to call this x1 and y1, and the end of the vector x2 and y2. So in order to find the overall distance of the vector, we obviously need to use Pythagoras theorem and stuff, but we're interested in angles. So what this does is works out the angle for us by using signs, causes and stuff like that, but what we need to do is make sure that it's the difference between the exposition of the first object and the exposition of the second object, if that makes sense. If it doesn't, don't worry, I'm going to show you in a bit. So x of vector 1 
is going to be the leg one's position. So we click on leg one, choose position, and go x coordinate. Then we choose minus, and then we choose the ball position x coordinate. Then we do the same for y. Can you guess what it does? That's right. We go to leg one position y coordinate. But what I missed, uh, forgot to tell you was that we need to select y of vector and these square brackets before we actually do that. So it's going to replace the y vector thing. So we go to position y coordinate of leg one minus then click on the ball and do the same thing so position y coordinate and we have the difference between x coordinates and y coordinates so here we go we click ok now we test it ideally when we press F the ball should be attracted towards the leg there we go no matter where it is so yeah as you can see, we're kind of sort of some Jedi-powered footballer who tries to knock around the ball and at the same time control his own distance. As, as you can see now, the ball actually falls onto the target and it doesn't actually go any further because we told it to stop. And it kind of does a little bounce afterwards. So yeah, we have our own controls now. And now we need to do the new condition to actually tell the ball to give us score. So when the ball hits another object, and the object is obviously the target that we are aiming for, so we choose the target, double click it. And this is what I like about Clicked Infusion. It has a perfect score system that automatically gets displayed in whichever score object you put in there. We go to the player column, player 1, right click, score, add to score. We add 1! Nah, just kidding. We'll add 5, we'll be generous. And now, we run application it will actually add the score to the game. Five, twenty. How many times has this hit already? Tell you what, thirty should be enough. So let's make it well, basically complete the game once you have hit the certain score. We'll add a new condition. So when the score is uh, there it is when player one score becomes certain value we basically close the game so compare to player score when it is equal to 30 okay we just need to close the application meaning the game is complete obviously we can display fancy stuff at the end but let's keep it simple for now we'll right click the first column which has the engine uh, thing on it and what we need to do is close the program down which should be somewhere here or even if it's not found here it usually is in the storyboard controls column which is a chessboard and a chess knight oh yes yes it is my bad apologies so we need to go to the third column and say end up the application. So now let's test out if it works. Run application and each time that we hit the goal, the target, look at this. Isn't the physics fun?
It turns into an application when we hit 30. How wonderful is that? Oh, if you really want to make it fancy quickly without much effort, then what we have to do is double click on the frame in the workspace toolbar. <coughs> and uh, then we have to go to runtime options in the properties window and basically change the way it's being displayed so actually we can add the even better settings from the first tab which says settings without actually changing much pictures by doing fade in and fade out which is also an option let's do that so I click on fade out and that edit bar button appears Click edit. We choose standard transitions because that's all we have at the moment. And we choose one of these, which is, for example, going to be mosaic. And then we choose the color, random color, let's say, a bit greenish. We choose the duration of the effect, so I'm going to choose like about three seconds and a bit and then we're gonna click OK let's test it out so we run application and when we try to close it it's just gonna fade out how cool is this <laughs> for three seconds so now that you know how to create a basic game let's talk about basic uh, animation and uh, object creation so if you want to create like, something uh, as a background you can create active backdrop or simply backdrop which should be somewhere here hidden behind all these objects yeah backdrop and basically when you click backdrop it just creates a similar to active thing you double click on it and you can also draw in it so Let's pretend this is a football pitch, so we're going to make it green with we'll like rectangle to fill to green color. Draw it like that. Choose a darker green and draw some little grass bits here and there. It is not Minecraft, I'm totally not a fan. Don't ask me about it in comments, please. And then we click OK. And then what we have to do is basically duplicate an object a certain number of times. So let's create it like as many times as needed. I don't know, uh, about 20 rows should be enough, 20 columns just to keep it safe as well. I know it's gonna need more columns than rows, but yeah. And there we have it. Perfect football pitch. Uh, not. Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, perfect for the pitch. We're on application. And now we have a little simple, nice game created in. How? Oh, what time is it? Uh, <coughs> apologies. Yeah. Did I say under 10 minutes? <laughs> I meant in under or exactly 10 events. So, yeah. Here we have a physics game that took us about half a freaking hour to create. And uh, it only took us, uh, I think it actually took us not many events. So, yeah, 10 events exactly. <laughs> there we go. So, in the trial version, you can't really execute files and uh, save them as executable files at the same time. But if you want to get the full version, then you can do that on the Click Team website or on Steam. So, pretty much in 10 steps, you have a fully working game, <laughs> 10 logical steps, I mean, 10 events, and basically what happens is that uh, you can <laughs> then get the developer version to get more advanced objects and release your games without having to give any loyalties to ClickTeam. But that's if you choose to do so. Now, if you actually want to get the normal 
version, the standard edition of Click Team, without developers but still better than trial, you can participate in competition. Competition time, everyone! If you made it to the end of this video, well done. Mm, I mean, uh, yeah. What you have to do is just uh, write some ideas for your game. So, basically, what kind of game you want to create. It doesn't have to be any deep description, just the genre and what the name of it maybe is. Or write something about what kind of game you want to make. The winner will be chosen after a month or so, and I will declare the winner in one of the videos. And basically you have to add me on Steam, if you are the winner, it's Victor's Dragon. And please be sure to uh, be able to receive the gifts if you are the winner. So yeah, good luck to everyone, just write in the comments your ideas. And good luck to everyone, once again.